kayak. We just barely got out here Hold to Saratoga Springs. Preston, can you tell us what you were just doing a second ago? Let's get to the kayak. Were you Preston. carrying food in for people? I was helping a little old lady because that's the kind of guy I am. First of all, aren't, aren't we illegally in this area? Absolutely. And now you're helping people. Yes. That's the kind of guy he is, everyone. That is the kind of guy that I am. Okay, so the three of us just snuck in also. Indeed. Uh, for some reason, we are lovely, still lovely on. Homeowners Association, by the way, Saratoga Springs. We're here in the Saratoga Springs Homeowners Association community. Well, we didn't sneak in. Community pool. Did you get in the hot tub, actually? I did. Docks to let you in. Well, uh, some mom, some mom. Oh, hey. yeah. Just to update everyone, uh, Ty, Todd, and myself, out of the kindness of our hearts, went to the store, bought a bunch of food. Drove all the way over to the Linden Bay, where we were waiting steadily and anxiously for the arrival of Justin Dickey, Preston Robinson. Uh, we spoke with Justin. He thought he was at the bay and at the dock. Turns out he was at a completely wrong one. Uh, he only went about halfway. He still got quite a ways to go. Uh, whereupon we got a phone call from Preston Robinson. A very interesting phone call at that. Uh, Preston, why are we here on the Saratoga Springs Come. Homeowners Association Come. Marina? Right, here's the dagger. Here's the dagger. Hold on. All right, let's do a little demo here. So, here's the situation with kayaking. I myself, not a very experienced kayaker, once before, was not aware that there's a plug at the end of this kayak that must be securely fastened at all times on the water. So, as I entered the water, the plug was in said position, such as this. And uh, as I began to kayak, I felt a little water tingling up and down my legs. And I felt like, you know what? Probably just a little splash. There's a lot of boats around here. I'm gonna be okay. So as I began to kayak a little further, more water's coming in. And I'm thinking, this is odd. I'm riding a little lower in the water. This is not very fun. I'm, this is harder to paddle. And I, I began to realize that I have a situation here with this plug. And, and you're, you're a couple hundred yards out at this point. Oh, at least. I'm a good half mile out. I'm out. I'm committed. There's no going back. No. It's as far to go to this way, this way, or this way. No matter which way I go, it's a, it's a good paddle. So I try to reach around, but as you can see, we all love a good reach around. Yeah, yeah here, I know you do. This is Especially impossible. Especially with the dagger. This is impossible to reach this. So from the kayak, I'm helpless. So I figure, well, maybe it's not, I'm not in danger yet. I'm just a little concerned about my phone, which as you can see is... It damaged, works. A little worse for wear. And uh, I began to angle my course a little towards the shore, just in case I needed to get to the shore. Well, it kept getting worse and worse, filling more and more, till I was about up to my hips in water. And uh, at this point I had about, you know, about an inch of clearance on the sides of the kayak as I was kayaking. Um, <laughs> every little, every little bump, every little wave was uh, just filling more water into the kayak. And then um, that fateful moment where one of these waves from a boat hit me, came over the bow, just filled up completely. And I decided to cut my losses and did one of these motions and pushed out of the kayak. You push out of the kayak and now you're the in kayak. the water. Now I'm in the water, which is, I'm not sure if you felt the water. It's pretty cold. It's pretty, pretty cold. Brisk. Estimated at about 40 degrees this fine afternoon. 40 degrees is, hold on. Yep, that's about right, yeah. So, yeah, right here. A little, yeah. So, I'm in, I'm in a situation now. I've got a kayak full of water. Um, I'm in freezing cold water. And I'm a good, I'd say, mile from either shore. Any way I go, I'm far. And uh, I figure, well, I might as well plug the plug. I try and flip this kayak upside down, realize that I just dumped my phone into the water. So I grab that. I try and turn the kayak upside down and try and get the water out. But if you've ever tried to lift a kayak full of water after you've been treading water in freezing cold water, it doesn't work. Doesn't work, I've heard. It doesn't work. So I realize that uh, my fate is my fate has been decided. Right. And uh, I think I beat Justin in the uh, Utah Lake Swimathon because they've already swam a good mile and a half. So you towed this? Push, push. I figured it was easier to just 
So you had it upside down. So well, you're with a float on this? And at this point it's floating. At this point I've got it to float. I got enough water out to where it would float. But if you got in it, it would probably sink back down again. I tried to get again. back on it to rest and it would just go down. Okay. So, so you used it to just hold yourself up a little bit, pushed it all the way in. I pushed it a good mile till I got to the reeds. And this is where the story gets fantastic. Now, did anyone see you? Was there any witnesses? Were you... Where we're going. So a, a man, I did not know this man, decides to come up in his boat and say, <laughs> and My pride is saying, F you, buddy, I don't need your help. But my legs and arms and balls are saying, yeah, okay, sure, why not. Did he ask you what you were even doing uh, out in the middle of Utah Lake? I think it's pretty self-explanatory. I didn't think he needed to ask. So, uh... I tell him, you know what, like I'm already, I was already at the reeds, like if you can see, it's, I mean, it's, I made it that far, I can make it the rest of the way, I said, you know what, I'm alright, I got it, and he persisted, and so he pulled the kayak up on his boat, we flipped it over, got the water out on the back of his little boat, put it back in the water, and I paddled to shore, whereupon I found myself at this luxury resort, if you can see, all of the amenities included. So I decided to make myself at home, and my thinking process was this. Uh, I'll go find a bathroom, because I'm sure every bathroom in America now, they don't have the towels, which really pisses me off, because I always want to dry my hands off on towels. They always have the blow dryer, right? Well, I figure, hey, I can blow dry my phone, problem solved, then I can make a phone call, save my life. While I go in the bathroom, there's no blow dryer, paper towels, the one time ever. And so, I had to, I went and sat in the hot tub, laid my phone, took it all apart, laid it out, let it air dry for a good 20 minutes, and then put it together, said a prayer, turned it on, was able to make a phone call. Made a phone call to us. To Troy. The first words out of his mouth is, where are you? I, he says, I'm in the Saratoga Springs hot tub. Yes. I said, what uh, the heck does that mean? I'm in the HOA hot tub. Yeah, I was not exactly suffering. Oh, this, this was suffering. This was kind of nice. So Preston, we're glad you're safe. I'm glad I'm safe too. This is uh Dickie gets wet. It's all for me. Yeah. June 4th, 2011. Full of events.